Frederick Osnam Parish on the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today as we gather in praise and thanksgiving for our Eucharistic celebration. And a special warm welcome to any new parishioners or visitors. We will be having a second collection today following communion for the, our church building fund. Thank you so much for your ongoing, ongoing generous support. We wish to gratefully acknowledge and thank all our dedicated volunteers without whom this mass and the live streaming of this mass would not be possible. Please rise. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Maria Scala, of Sebastian Rosario Fernandez, and of Rosie de Souza and her deceased family members. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our celebration on this, the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to those who may be visiting or here for the first time. Before we begin, as always, let us pause for a moment of silence, call to mind our sins, and ask for the Lord's pardon and mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Man, Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Joseph, sorry, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Joseph, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is reverenced among the nations. And now, O priests, this command is for you. If you will not listen, if you will not lay to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send the curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed them because you do not lay to heart. You have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. And so I make you despised and abased before all the people Inasmuch as you have not kept my ways, but have shown partiality in your instruction. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our ancestors? The word of the Lord. Your response is, in you, in you, Lord, I have found my peace. O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, Though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. You remember our labor and toil, Brothers and sisters, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as what it really is, the word of God which is also at work in you believers. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' chair. Therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they, pre what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instruct instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. These are the words from the refrain of today's psalm, and with these simple words lie the key to a life full of joy and serenity, and the key to conquering our fears and worries, and believe it or not, the key to peace in our times. For all of us desire peace, and all of us are searching for peace of some kind, especially in these turbulent times when there is so much turmoil and unrest around us, both in nature and in human affairs. But although peace is one of the most valuable and sought after things in life, peace is also one of the most elusive things to find. And as a result, people look to all sorts of things for peace. And because peace is such a high commodity, there are many today who consider themselves ambassadors and prophets of peace selling and offering peace to us in all sorts of different forms. For example, in the form of consumerism and wealth, in the form of various political and social ideologies, in the form of religious scrupulosity and extremism. All of these promise us and offer us peace of mind. But believe it or not, the world in the time of Jesus was in just as much turmoil as our world is now today. And moreover, in the time of Jesus, just as it is now, there are many who consider themselves prophets and ambassadors of peace, offering and selling peace of mind under various forms. Within Israel, chief among these prophets and ambassadors of peace were the scribes and Pharisees, the religious leaders of the time. And because the scribes and Pharisees were learned men, men who could read and, and interpret the Torah, they considered themselves messengers and prophets of God's teaching and God's will. And in so doing, they convinced themselves and others that only they could calm the fears and worries of the people of Israel. And only they possessed the key to true and lasting peace. But the problem is that the scribes and Pharisees made their traditions into God. And in so doing, they made the worship of the one true God overly burdensome, complicated, and ritualistic. And by doing so, they made themselves and others slaves to their traditions rather than servants of the one true God. Because of this, their numerous and burdensome traditions failed miserably to provide the sense of peace people really needed and wanted. And instead, they only served to create more stress, more worry, and more anxiety in people's lives. But in the midst of all this comes Jesus, the incarnate Son of God, who angers the scribes and Pharisees by shattering the illusion of what they were offering, by challenging and exposing the lies in which their offer of peace was made, and by showing us the true path to peace 
and by offering us peace that nothing and no one in this world can provide. For whereas the scribes and Pharisees were offering peace through rules, rituals, and religious, religiosity, Jesus was offering peace through our relationship, our relationship with the one true God. And whereas the scribes and Pharisees considered themselves ambassadors and prophets of peace, Jesus is the very source of peace itself, being born the Prince of Peace. And whereas the scribes and Pharisees were offering peace based on the temporal things of this life and this world, Jesus was offering peace based on eternal things, things that transcend this life and this world. And just as Jesus shatters the illusions of peace in his time, so too he sh comes to shatter the illusions of peace in our time, to expose any false offer of peace we may have bought into, and to challenge any illusion of peace on which we may have built our lives. For wherever we search for peace and wherever we believe we have found peace will ultimately become our God. And so today our Lord invites us to examine our search for peace and to ask ourselves in whom or what is our peace found. For if it is not God himself, then we have accepted a false offer of peace and have settled for the illusion of peace rather than any kind of meaningful and lasting peace of mind and heart. For as the psalm says, it is only in the Lord that we and the world will find, will truly find peace. Amen. Now let us stand and profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead for the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us offer our prayers to our one Father through our one Master and Teacher, knowing that the Lord wishes to lift, up our, lift our burdens and lead us into the fullness of life. As we pray, loving God, hear our prayer. For all priests, deacons, and religious sisters and brothers, that they may manifest the love and compassion of God in their words and deeds, and inspire the faithful by the way they live out their vocation, we pray. For Pope Francis's November intention, that as he continues to lead the Universal Church with the help of, his whole, of the Holy Spirit, he may provide the necessary care and guidance to the flock entrusted to him. We pray for peace, that God will bring an end to violence, protect the innocent from harm, and open opportunities for dialogue. We pray for our parish of Blessed Frederick Ozenham, 
that our community will continue to grow and thrive, both spiritually and physically, bringing to fruition our mission to build our new church in which to offer glory and praise to God. We pray. For all who are ill, that God will heal their bodies, minds, and spirits and restore them to wholeness. We pray. For our beloved deceased, especially those remembered in our parish book of life, that, may, that they may rest in the peace of God's love forever. We pray. Gracious and loving Father, hear our prayers and continue to lead us along the path of mercy, love, and humility. We entrust all our needs and intentions to you through our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of, our, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice 
of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Frederick Ozenam and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs>
And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
this week's announcements. Uh, the Knights of Columbus will again be collecting donations this weekend and next weekend to purchase winter coats for children in need. The coats will be distributed to elementary schools in our community. As winter draws near, once again, we ask you to please consider supporting this worthy cause. For more information, please see the parish bulletin. Also, the Knights of Columbus are also selling religious-based Christmas cards after Mass this weekend. The proceeds will go to support the good work that the Knights of Columbus do. Uh, Monday, November 6th, so that's this Monday at 7 p.m., we'll, we will be having a Mass to pray for all our departed loved ones that we have lost over the past year or so. Uh, this will take place at St. Mark's Church in Stouffville. So once again, that's Monday, 7 p.m. at St. Mark's Church in Stouffville. Uh, if you have lost a loved one over the last year or two or maybe three, uh, we invite you to uh, attend this Mass and to pray for those you have lost. November is also All Souls, Month, All Souls Month, as I mentioned. So during November, we will be praying for all those whose names are included in our Book of Life binder in front of the altar here. Uh, there's purple sheets available in the foyer, uh, so you can uh, take one of those, add the names of those whom you wish to have included, and you can drop them off at the welcome desk uh, during weekend masses. And once again, for more information about that, please see the parish bulletin. Uh, confirmation, uh, with regards to confirmation registration, Info sheets can be picked up after Mass, so we had an info session today uh, with uh, many of the parents uh, who are having their child confirmed. Uh, we handed out, we gave out handouts at that meeting. Some of those handouts are, are, are available as you exit the school and the foyer. Um, so if you weren't at the meeting, you can grab one of those. Uh, that in same information will be sent to, the, all the, to, all, to each of our four schools and will be available on our website as of the end of the day on Tuesday. So all that will happen uh, by Tuesday at the end of the day. Uh, our youth ministry invites students in grades five, six, seven, and eight to join our next EDGE night. So we, had, uh, we launched our EDGE program last Saturday uh, at the Markham Bowl. Um, where I won two of the games but lost the rest. Um, um, yeah, I wasn't on, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't doing too well. It's hard to bowl in your Darth Vader outfit. Um, so we are continuing the fun on November 11th. So that's next Saturday from at 7 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. That will be the official launch of our EDGE program this year. So come out for the five Fs, faith, fun, fellowship, and of course, free food. Um, and those not yet registered can sign up on the day of the Edge Night, or they can email alex at youth at blessedozenam.ca. Alex will also be here to take registrations after Mass and all Masses this weekend uh, to register your child for the Edge program. Uh, tomorrow, tonight is Daylight Savings. Yay! This is the one I really like when we gain an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could do this every time, just keep gaining an hour and keep gaining an hour. Um, so uh, just, just a reminder about that. Also, tomorrow is Coffee Sunday. I know you guys are here today, but you're welcome to come back for Coffee Sunday. <laughs> Free Timbits and coffee and hot chocolate and lots of fellowship, of course. We're still trying to work out something. I know you guys miss out a lot, so we're still trying to work out something for Saturday evenings, maybe Samosa Saturdays or something like that. <laughs> I think that was Vanessa suggested that, <laughs> Samosa Saturdays. Uh, or we have a professional baker who uh, is offered to uh, bake some goods for us once a month for that purpose, so there's more to come about that. Anyway, you're welcome to join us tomorrow for Coffee Sundays. And I think that's it. Please stand for the closing prayer. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Go forth now in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks everyone for joining us. Special thanks to those who joined us virtually and in spirit through the live stream. Also with regards to the EDGE uh, program, there's handouts for that as well. Uh, as so you'll find them where you find the handouts for confirmation. I hope you all have a great week and hope to see you again real soon. God bless. Mm -hmm.